forgot to dress Snoozer. Snoozer! Sorry, pal. I forgot to put you together again. All right, what do I need you? Hello? What? All right, one second. Oh, okay. Uh, snoozer! Your trunk, that's what I need. All right, hold on. Wait a minute. Too pointy. Hold on, snoozer. Now. Much better. All right, you're all set. No, you're not. You need your googly eyes. Okay, hold on. All righty. Snoozer, I need to make them bigger. All right, I'll be there in a minute. Hold on, snoozer. Okay. You, you need your eyes. Okay, snoozer, we are gonna get you together in a jet. All right, much better. Oh my goodness, snoozer! You need your battery! Snoozer! Hello! I am Snoozer! Alright, pal, are you ready for a trip today? Definitely! All right, well, let's get going on our reading road trip. Seatbelt. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? All right, Snoozer, I'll give you three hints, and let's see if you can get it this time. Hint number one, it is loud. Hint number two, it is indoor and outdoor. And hint number three, it has lots of good boys and good girls. Good boys? Hmm. Oh, I know, good boy, like a dog. We are going to a place with a dog. Yes, we are going to a dog training facility, a place that teaches dogs how to behave as they grow up. A dog school? Cool! I love doggies! Yeah, well, today's trip is all about pets. You know, pets like dogs, cats, goldfish, rabbits, turtles, animals that we can take in our home and that can be pets. Like a lion! <laughs> not really, Snoozer. Lions don't really make great pets. Why not? They look like big kitties! Well, lions are related to cats, but they're very different. Lions have spent thousands and thousands of years in the wild, and that's where they're most happy. If we were to take an animal like a lion, a tiger, a hippo, a bear, a gorilla, or something like that into our home, it probably wouldn't be as happy, and it could actually be dangerous because they're not used to living like that. Now, there are special places like wildlife rescues that do a great job of taking care of these animals, but those people are specially trained so we can't take an animal like a lion into our house. But Snoozer, what is your favorite domestic animal, like the ones I mentioned before? I like gerbils. Gerbils? I haven't mentioned those yet. Why do you like gerbils? Because I'm really small. I like dogs, but sometimes they are bigger than me. I like gerbils because they're really tiny and I can hold them. Well, that is a perfectly understandable reason, Snoozer. Hey, Zot, do you have any information about gerbils? Zot the robot at your service. In the wild, gerbils live in deserts. Gerbils can't be owned in California or Hawaii. It's illegal. They live on average three to four years. 
Gerbils are very playful and like to play with their owners every day. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. Well, there you go, Snoozer. There's some information about gerbils, your favorite pet. Gerbils live in deserts? Wowie wow wow! Gerbils can be found in the deserts of Africa, Asia, and India. Are there wild dogs? Well, Snoozer, there's a canine in the wild known as the African wild dog. It is one of the most endangered species in the entire world. There are less than 7,000 of them left. And of course, we've talked about how wolves and dogs share many similarities, and wolves, of course, are wild animals. Now I want to read about dogs and cats and gerbils! Absolutely. We think we know all these things about pets and all this information, but there's so much more we don't know. And that is why we are going to a dog training facility so we can learn more about animals like dogs. Let's pulp the map. We are headed to Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, it will take us right to our destination, Canine Academy. Along the way, we're going to check in with Dr. Dan for a health tip, and Mrs. Hamilton, your teacher, is going to do a dog craft with you. Oh boy, I get to make my very own doggy. Yeah, that's gonna be a wonderful time, getting to make your own dog. Hey, snoozer, here come the books. Snoozer. A Fish Out of Water by Helen Palmer and Because of Wind Dixie by Kate Picamilla. Like it, I like it. Because of Wind Dixie. Now that's probably a book for older readers, so I'll probably have to read that book to you. But I think you could read A Fish Out of Water all by yourself. Why is the fish out of the water? That sounds like a bad idea. Oh yes, very bad. Well, does he get back in the water? I'm not going to ruin the whole story for you, Snoozer, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. So there's a boy who buys a fish named Otto, and the pet store owner tells the boy not to feed the fish too much. But the boy doesn't listen, so he keeps feeding the fish, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh no! Does he explode? Maybe. But probably not. This isn't a very scary story. But it does teach us a lot about how important it is to be good pet owners. Experts know how much we should feed our animals, so it's not a very good idea to overfeed them. But there's another thing I really love about this story, and that is the fantastic illustrations by P.D. Eastman. He does such a great job with the characters and the way the colors pop. It looks a lot like some of the Dr. Seuss books, but it has its own unique flavor to it. So I love the way the art and illustrations look, and it makes the story a lot more fun. So that is A Fish Out of Water. That's gonna be a good book to read. I just hope Otto doesn't explode at the end. Well, we'll just have to read and find out. But right now, I think it'd be a great time for us to get our art supplies out and do our dog craft. How does that sound? Yay! All right, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton to make a dog craft with you, Snoozer. Hi, Snoozer. Are you ready to make the craft? Yippers! Oh, that's great. Well, today we are going to be making a dog, and it is going to look like this. Whoa! So what we are going to be needing are these two sheets. The make and take a dog sheets. You need scissors, glue, and then we're good to go. So let's start cutting out the pieces. I think I'm ready to go, so I am just gonna kind of visualize what this is gonna look like when we're all through. So I'm putting the head on and the ears. If you put your pieces kind of in place, then you know just what to do. And of course, you don't have to do it the way Mrs. Hamilton did it. Make it your own. All right, so here we go. Make the ears go up, make the ears go down, however you choose. So let's see. Well, I should glue the head on first. Okay, where am I gonna put my ears? Where, where? Go to the traditional. Okay. Tail. Well, that was 
easy. So this is how mine looks. Oh, well mine looks like this. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye. And now, the question of the week. Do you have a pet? I had two fishies that were named Goofy and Donald. Yes, I have a pet. He is a dog. His name is Seamus. He likes to play fetch. No, I don't have a pet. I wish I had a dog. I have three fish. They're named Violet, Angel, and Lightning. Javier, do you have a pet? Yep. He's a rabbit and his name is T-Rex. Thanks for joining us for the Question of the Week. Sad Snoozer, your dog just looks a little bit different. That's all right. But I wanted my dog to be perfect. Now it's terrible. Snoozer, your dog looks different than Mrs. Hamilton's dog, but that's what makes it special. It was made by you, and only you could have made it the way you did. Really? Yeah. If every dog looked exactly the same, then they would be no unique dogs. They'd all look alike, and nothing would be special. But your dog was made by you the way you made it. Ooh! Now I'm happy. I love my little doggy. Now that I'm in a dog mood, I want to talk about the second book. That would be this book right here, Because of Win Dixie. Now, I remember this book pretty well. It's about a 10-year-old girl named India Opal Baloney, who recently moved to Florida with her father, who is now a preacher at a local church. Now, one day she comes across a stray dog, and she adopts it, and that is where all the adventure begins. Now, this book has themes of abandonment, friendship, communication, kindness, all those things wrapped together. It's got some sad moments, but it's got a lot of happy and funny moments that balance it out. I think you're going to absolutely love this story when I read it to you. It's a little bit longer, but it's got so many great things in it that you're going to really enjoy it, especially all those people like you, Snoozer, who love dogs. Yee-hee! Hey, Zot, what other books about animals are there? Zot the Robot at your service. Today's selections are Go Dog Go by P.D. Eastman. 101 Dalmatians by Dodie Smith My Dog Romeo by Ziggy Marley Pete the Cat by Eric Litwin and James Dean The Pokey Little Puppy by Jeanette Sabring Lowry Where's Arthur's Gerbil by Mark Brown Books featuring pets Goodbye. I'm super excited to read these stories later, but first, I'm really in the mood to pet a dog. Well, we're getting pretty close to the rainbow, but what do you say we pay a visit to the beast of Fuzzleland? Are you bonkers? We can't go back to him. He's so big, he can eat our whole van in one gulp. I, I know, Snoozer, but this time I have an idea. Trust me. Zot, bring us down in between Winter Woods and Music Mountains. Too much food, just like the goldfish from that story. I hadn't thought of that. Maybe. Maybe he got so big, and now he thinks we're just chew toys. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I brought the expander. But checkers, he won't fit inside the expander. He's too big. I know he's too big, snoozer. I've got it all figured out. Well, I hope so. This plan makes no sense. No sense at all. 
Oh dear, I'm going to be doggy food. Did you know? There are over 400 different breeds of dogs in the world! The most popular breed of pet dog in the world is a Labrador. The average dog is as intelligent as a two-year-old child. Adult dogs have 42 teeth. <laughs> the library has tons of books about dogs. Visit the library to learn more. Whew. Snoozer, how far did I just walk? About a half mile. All right. Now I've got to find that dog. No, it, will but it will make sense, Snoozer, don't worry. I'll, I'll explain it later. I wonder. Analyzing, doggy breath detected. It's been here recently. Playing dog sounds. Snoozer. I think we found him. Where's the van? Snoozer, I am executing a three-point turn. No, we just transformed into toys. We're still on the road. Ah, good idea. We're so small, he probably can't even see us. Well... Well, what? <coughs> Keep calm, Snoozer. Everything's going according to plan. What plan? The plan. Zot, take us up. No! You're making him even bigger? No, I'm turning the expander backwards, reversing the effect, and- Turning him smaller. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Release the rope. Crying out loud. 
Checkers, is there a doctor for pets? All right, hold on, snoozer. That's a good question. Let's ask Dr. Dan. Oh, hey, whoa! Is that a dog in the car with you? Yeah, he's not driving. He's just shrunk. Oh, okay. Scare me for a second. Is there a doctor for pets? Yes, snoozer, there absolutely is. Now, just like all of us need to go to the doctor for our checkup appointments, for our physicals, and when we don't feel well, so do animals. They go to a little bit different type of doctor, a veterinarian or vet. A vet is a type of doctor that takes care of animals. And animals need just the same things that we do. They need to go to the doctor for checkups, they need to go to the doctor to get their shots, and they need to go to the doctor when they don't feel well. Now when an animal goes to the vet, the vet's gonna do a lot of the same stuff that a doctor would do for a person. The vet might listen to the animal's heart and lungs with a stethoscope. They might look at an animal's ears with one of these called an otoscope, which is a tool that looks in someone's ears. They might weigh the animal, and they might use one of these, a measuring tape, to measure the animal. So a lot of the same stuff. Animals also need shots to keep them safe, just like you and me need shots. Shots? I don't like shots! I know, Snoozer, but like we've talked about, it's very important to get shots, not just for yourself, but for everyone else. And the same goes for animals. The animals are protecting all the other animals when they get their shots too. When I go to the doctor, I ask questions. Is it okay to ask the vet questions? Yes, Snoozer, you absolutely should. Vets are there to make sure your animal is safe. So always ask a vet before you give your animal any medicine, any food, or any other questions you might have about keeping your animal safe. They're doctors just like us. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Did you know? There are over 500 million domestic cats in the world. Cats and humans have been associated for nearly 10,000 years. Cats spend a large amount of time licking their coats to keep them clean. Cats have powerful night vision, allowing them to see at light levels six times lower than what a human needs in order to see. The library has tons of books about cats. Visit the library to learn more. Oh, it was very interesting. I wonder how the dogs go back there. Let's check. You know what? He's kind of cute when he's not trying to eat us. I agree, Snoozer. And I'm looking forward to bringing him with us to Canine Academy. I think we can train him to behave. Hey, Snoozer, we're at the rainbow! Well, if we're gonna cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suits. So, let's push this button and change into our safety suits. All right, Snoozer, here we go, going through the rainbow. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week. What should you do if your dog starts to eat your library book? Take the words out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're too much. This place looks great. That's it. <laughs> 
Whoa, he's a good boy. Wait, wait. What a cool dog! I wonder if he can jump over me! Oh boy! The cow jumped over the moon, and the dog jumped over the snoozer! Some two, just show it to him. Put it in his nose. And tell him to sit. Sit. Tell him to say hi and wave to him. Say hi! Wave! Wave to him. There you go. Oh boy. Can you tell him to spin? Can you Should I have spin, uh, sit Spin? So Show him. Yep, you're going to say spin. 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 Come on, buddy. Spin. Take that tree. Spin. And put it on like, his nose and bring it around. Sp oh, spin? spin? Yes. Spin. <laughs> I can't get him to do it. All right, let me get in front of him again. Spin. And bring it around his head. Make a big Spin. There we go. I can't believe how well trained these dogs are. I know. Let's see if they can train the beast. Okay. Make sure he keeps his nose Come here. Come here. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Metal. Nibble. Metal. There you go. Come on. Good, Good boy. boy. Nice. Good job, bud. He's like, I did the thing, Gretchen. <laughs> I did the thing. <laughs> Woo! The training is working. Sit. Pause up, gentle. Good boy. That's a good little guy. I'm going to try now. Down. Boy. Let's take a picture. Say cheese. Whew, snoozer, what a day. And now we've learned a whole bunch about domestic animals and we've got a new friendly dog with us. Well, as soon as we get home today, we're going to read A Fish Out of Water and Because of Winn-Dixie. And as the week goes on, I think we should check out more books at the library about domestic animals. Just like the dogs, the cats, the turtles, the goldfish, and all other pets. Maybe even a book about gerbils for you, snoozer. Yahoo! And pretty soon, we're going to be going on another trip, going to exciting places and meeting with great animals on our next reading road trip. <laughs>